Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Thursday, January the 30th, kicks off a 50 cent late pick four at Aqueduct. It's race number five. We're going six furlongs for three-year-old maiden special weights. And let's take a peek at this field. Trainer Chad Brown have two first-time starters. He has the number one, cousin Andrew for Claravich Stables, the number five, Favola for Paul Pampa, neither the morning line favorite, the experienced number six, ghost fighter, a half-million-dollar yearling, and a son of Tappet. He is the two-to-one morning line favorite. You can download free formulator past performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them and handicap along with us. We'll take this field in post position order, beginning with one of the Chad Brown trained first time starters, the number one cousin Andrew. And boy, Mike, it just appears that cousin Andrew's bred for maybe longer distances and maybe turf. Into Mischief's a rock solid first out stallion. He wins 11% with older debut runners. But this dam is a half to mass track who won the Hollywood Gold Cup going a mile and a quarter on synthetic. The dam's also a half to Sagita Ra, who's grade two placed going long on the turf. This horse sold for $270,000. I wonder if six is a little short. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what we get. Um, the dam, you know, herself really couldn't run at all, but she is a sister to a good horse. Her first two falls, you know, they're nothing to write home about. One of them's one for seven. The other one's two for 13. Um, they aren't much horse either. One of them, we'll see. Maybe this horse is a little better. They paid some pretty good money for it um, and, and is by a good stallion into mischief. Listen, we'll see what happens then. I personally, first time starters from this barn sprinting on the dirt, I'm just happy to let them beat me. Um, they win at a fine percentage. Chad has them ready to go about 19%. Um, I mean, no matter how you slice it, first time starters and dirt sprints by age, by track, whatever. They'll win about 19%, but the ROI is about $1.20. You're taking the worst of it, betting these horses first time out. Fair point to be sure, Cousin Andrew, 6-1 to one on the morning line. We'll see how they bet this race. The number two, Mr. Phil, should take some money. He's run very well in most of his starts for Jimmy Ryerson, including this race. His first start off a two-month layoff in a snow, and he's on the outside right now. Kihotic is just better than he is, and he's 4-5. to five. Kihotic looks Mr. Phil in the eye, says, not today, Mr. Phil. This is the fourth consecutive time now that Mr. Phil has finished second, and a couple of those races came in maiden claimers, but he certainly has figures and credentials that indicate if he can take a step forward off this race in his second start of the layoff, he could be tough here. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, I guess that a lot of it depends on what the first-time starters do, um, but I mean, if he just shows up and runs his typical race, he feels like he'll be competitive here. I thought he ran well on that race we just watched. I thought his race two back. I thought maybe even ran even better that day. They were walking on the lead in there. He made a nice run at Hemlock at the end of that race. I don't know. He feels like he's in good form. He's probably going to be an okay price. The number three is Sixto. Now, this horse sold for $330,000 as a yearling and then resold for $250,000 at the Santa Anita sale back in June for two-year-olds. I wonder if this horse wants more ground, too. He's a son of Curl and who wins 15% with older debut runners. But the dam won four route races. And this horse, Sixto, is a half to catch my drift, who really wanted to go longer distances. Some nice five furlong works on the tab. This barn, I think, does a little bit better with second-time starters. Yeah, they're not winning a lot uh, first time out here, Gio. I have him at two for his last 45 with first-time starters overall. Um, one for 37 on dirt in that sample. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm just going to take a wait-and-see approach. I do like his pedigree, but I like his pedigree for more distance. I wonder if the four It's a Wrap of the first-time starters has the more sprint-oriented win-early pedigree. He's a son of Twirling Candy who wins 15% with his older debut runners. This dam won four sprints, and the dam's a half to a stakes-winning sprinter named o Over the Edge who won over a synthetic surface. A $17,000 buyback is a weanling. He sold for $83,000 in June. Show some bullet workouts for Michelle Nevin. Yeah, I thought this was an interesting firster um, as well, um, for all the reasons that you just mentioned, in fact. You know, and we'll just see what this horse does. Michelle Nevin isn't, you know, well known for having her first time starters all cranked up. So maybe this horse needs a race. And it, it is worth noting that um, Nevin's struggling a little bit at the meet. But I'm not going to worry about that stuff. Um, I thought of the first time starters, maybe this was the one I would be most interested in. 
Chad Brown's five favola to me also bred for maybe turf and distance. This is a gelding, a son of Midnight Loot who wins 12% with older debut runners. The dam's a half to Tomahawk, a multiple group one place horse on the turf. The second dam was a grade three stakes winner on the turf. This is the family of Academy Award who won the Manhattan on the turf. You get my drift. Favola, $50,000 weanling, sold for eighty five k as a yearling. Yeah, I thought uh, the, sort of the same way it seems like you're leaning, Dan. It seems like there's a lot of grass in this pedigree, which makes me want to take a wait-and-see approach. But you know what? Chad shipped this horse up from Florida to run up here. Um, so maybe that means something. Of the two Chad horses, I sort of preferred this one, but I don't really want to bet either one of them. Ghost Fighter is the six, and this horse made a nice impression in his debut at Gulfstream Park on September 29th. Let's watch that race right now. Consider that this race produced four next out winners. He's down towards the inside right now in fourth place, and he's making a striking late run with that white blaze. He's going to alter course to the outside, and he's going to get up for second. Again, a very good effort finishing ahead of four next out winners. Based on this race, he was favored second out at Churchill, and he caught a nice horse, Halo again, who came back to win the Coronation Futurity at Woodbine with a 72 buyer. Yeah, he didn't run as well second time out. Um, that horse that beat him was pretty good. Um, this horse just got tired in the stretch there after doing some chasing. Um, but his debut was a really good performance. The one we just watched, he didn't break great at all in that race and was totally outrun early. Um, but he made a big move on the turn, and you saw the finish that he put in. If he can run back to something like that, this horse is supposed to be tough in yet. A son of Tappet that cost a half million dollars going out for Cassie. Lots to like with the six ghost fighter who's your top selection as we take a look at our picks for the race of the day. I'm just guessing with Cousin Andrew. I think he's kind of going to be ignored a little bit in the pedigree. I like his pedigree. I think there's class here. I just wonder if six furlongs is way too short for him. I'd like to actually see Mr. Phil break through, and maybe this is just the right spot yeah. for him. But Ghost Fighter is probably the horse to beat. Six, two, four, five for me. I'll take a shot with this Chad Furster, hoping to get around nine to two or five to one. Yeah, I'm just going to stay with the experienced horses, Dan. The, the first time starters didn't really do a lot for me in this race. I liked Ghost Fighter's debut. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. We're going to kick off a late pick four at Aqueduct on Thursday with your DRF race of the day. It's the fifth at six furlongs with an approximate post time, 2.55 Eastern. Good luck.